pas très bien. Alors, je vais vous partager les diapositives. C'est bon, vous voyez bien Oui, euh, oui c'est bon. On voit. Parfait, merci. Donc, aujourd'hui, euh, ah, peut-être je vais le faire en anglais, en fait. Je vais le faire en anglais pour euh, l'étudiante d'échange, si, si elle ne peut pas se connecter pour avoir le, le cours en anglais. Euh, si vous avez des questions, vous pouvez les poser en français, de toute façon. OK S'il y a des trucs pas clairs aussi, vous m'arrêtez et je, je pourrais faire un point en français. Uh, okay, so now today we're going to study another kind of stochastic processes um, which are called Markov processes. And um, we are going to switch in the middle of the lecture uh, to another kind of processes, the Moran processes, before going into theoretical details of the Markov processes, okay? So don't be afraid if at some point I will tell you, okay, we are going to see this part the next time and uh, we are going to switch to the Moran processes, okay? So uh, first of all, I will see some uh, definitions, some basic definitions on Markov chains or, or Markov processes, and then we're going to jump on Moran processes. So let's go to the Markov chains. So what are uh, Markov chains? So uh, before defining these Markov chains, we are um, going to define what are integer time stochastic processes. These Markov chains belong to this kind of uh, so-called integer time stochastic processes. And um, Okay, these, these, these processes, they, they will follow the, the basic uh, definition of a stochastic process. So we have these random variables that are tagged with a little, um, uh, a little tag here. And this little tag uh, will belong to N, okay? Uh, so the difference um, regarding uh, this, uh, this kind of processes is that they are appearing uh, at discrete times uh, that can be uh, modeled as integers, using integers, okay? Um, most of the time, this n, this index, will belong to n, which is a subspace of the uh, positive natural integers. Um, and the, the random variable uh, indexed with a time n, it will be called the state of the system or the state at time n. Okay, so it's like you have a system, for example, I don't know, um, the weather, let's say, and um, at time n, you will say which, which is the state of the system uh, in the in the space, for example, sunny or cloudy or uh, whatever, okay? Um, so xn, as I told you, will belong to um, a set S, which uh, corresponds to the state space, okay? So all the values that can um, be taken by these random variables are defined by this set S. And most of the time, we're going to define S as a subset of uh, the natural integers also, so numbers between one until n, capital N. So if we imagine this, the, the first example of the weather, we can say that sunny is one and cloudy is two, for example, if we imagine two states. Um, the difference, I mean, you, you can say, but for the counting processes, when we were counting the number of arrivals, we also were dealing with integers, but there is a little difference is that the, for the counting processes, the n, the number of arrivals, was tagged by a t, was indexed by t, which uh, normally belongs to the positive uh, real values, okay? Um, so in this case, we have a discrete uh, set of events, and here uh, they can appear um, in a continuous time, let's say. 
Now let's go to the definition of a discrete time Markov chain. Uh, these kind of processes are um, characterized by, they, they are, as I told you, integer time random processes. And these, these processes should also verify, satisfy the Markov property. And the more Markov pro property tells you that the probability of the next state, the state at time n plus one, only depends on the current state. So uh, on the state at time n and not on previous states. So uh, this uh, can be written this way uh, using mathematical notation. So the probability that the random variable at time n plus one, the state of the system at time n plus one is equal to little x knowing that it was equal to x1 uh, at time 1 the, and so on until uh, time n. So the, the random variable xn at time n was equal to little xn only depends on this last part. Okay, So it will be equal to the probability to get a state uh, with value x at time n plus 1 given only the previous step that is capital xn so the random variable at time n is equal to little xn and that's it so all the other dependencies on past states uh, will vanish will disappear because the only dependency that matters is the one at time n at the previous step uh, we can say, in other words, that the future state will be independent from the past state given the, uh, given the present state, okay? So this can be written this way in mathematical notation, but what matters here is that um, only the, the last state, the present state, let's say, will define the future one, and the past can be forgotten if we know the present state. Okay, so um, so this, this definition uh, will characterize the Markov chain of order one. Okay, so it depends only on the uh, previous step, one, one step ahead, uh, uh, before. But we can also modify a little bit this um, this definition in order to uh, define Markov chains of order n. So in this case, what does it mean? It means that um, the future state will not only depend on the present one, but in on the previous n states. Okay, this is the big, the, the difference with the previous definition is that the next state, the future state, will only depend on its previous n states. Um, so if we write this down, it, uh, it can be seen like this using the formulas. So the probability to that the m, the variable at time m is equal to xm, giving all the previous states from the first one to the just the previous one, m minus one, uh, is equal to uh, the probability to get little xm at time m, giving only the n previous steps, okay? So we are going to forget all that is before the n uh, previous step. So we're going to take a look to the, fir to the first uh, one before and so on until the n one, okay? Um, we can modify a little bit uh, these notations in order to get the classical Markov property. And to do so, we can just define a new random variable that will be a chain of random variables uh, that is simply equal to this. So instead of looking one, st one, uh, one random variable, we, we can take a look to a whole chain, a whole vector, if you want, that will go from n to n minus n plus one. So it will going to take a look to the to n states. And this way we can say that our future state will only depend on this chain that is defined at the previous step. It's a, 
a way of cheating, if you want, to get the classical Markov property um, to describe, let's say, the Markov chain of order n, uh, disguising it into uh, the classical Markov property. Okay, but for this lecture, uh, you only need to remember the, the, the first one, the first des description, and you should also know that in order to define um, Markov chains of order greater than one, uh, okay, you have the definition that will be more or less the same or anal analogous to the first one, and that you can cheat, change the variable, define uh, some of some sort of chain or vector um, that will define entirely the future step. Um, now we are going to define another, um, let's say, specialization of Markov chain that will be called the time homogeneous Markov chain, or sometimes called directly homogeneous Markov chain or stationary Markov chain. Um, so in this lecture, we are going to abbreviate it with HMC, okay? And um, this, this, um, this kind of, of Markov chains uh, is governed by a property that will tell you that uh, the probability of a transition is independent of the time of time. Okay, so it, it's going to tell you that the probability that um, at n time uh, at time uh, n plus one we are going to get a value x, uh, knowing that at time n we got a value y, um, is equal to the probability that at time n, so not n plus one, but n, we are we are going to get x, just as here, and at, uh, given that at time n plus one, and not at time n, we got y. So it's not important if you have a little a gap in time, the conditional probabilities uh, regarding the, the previous state will remain the same. So if this was not true, it means that given that now you are at time n plus one, the, prob the probabilities have changed. And in a homogeneous Markov chain, this is not the case. And that's why we are also talking about stationary Markov chains. If you remember the definition of what is a stationary um, random process uh, or stochastic process, it means that the distributions of the random variables are not going to change a long time. And this is uh, what this formula is telling you. It's telling you that it's not because now you are one step ahead in time that the probabilities, the conditional probabilities will change. They will remain the same, even if you are one step ahead in time. If you, even if you are moving um, in this uh, in this dimension. So if we represent, if we take a look to our representation of this kind of Markov chains, uh, we can represent the homogeneous Markov chains as a single digraph. Okay, if you remember a digraph, it's, it's a directed graph. Uh, and in this case, it could be represented as a weighted direct graph. Uh, the nodes here are the states of the system. So in this case, let's imagine that we have a random variable that take, that can take three possible values, a, b, and c. Um, and the arrows, the edges, are representing the transition between one state uh, in the previous time to the other state in the next time. So here we have the probability uh, that the system will go from state B at time N to state A at time N plus one and so on. You have all these probabilities. If you do not have an arrow, for example, you don't have an arrow from C to B, it means that the probability that the system will go from C to B in the next day, uh, step is equal to zero. You cannot go from C to B. Okay, and uh, okay, now you have this, uh, this representation like a graph and uh, you know that 
uh, once you have a graph, you can represent the graph using its adjacency matrix. And that's we, what we are going to do in this lecture. Um, in the case of, of a non-homogeneous Markov chain, um, you will have a graph like this, but just at one time. At time n plus one, you will have a graph, but at time n equal to capital N, you will have another graph that can be different from the previous one because this property is not, uh, is not maintained. And in this case, you can have a, a kind of drift, if you want, in the probabilities, in the conditional probabilities. Um, do you have a question regarding this, uh, this kind of representations? Any question? No? Okay. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit further. And I think very soon we're going to shift to the other kind of processes. Okay. Um, okay. Now, I told you just before that this graph, this transition graph, can be modeled like uh, using a matrix, the adjacency matrix, if you remember your graph theory lessons. So um, here we have a very simple system. We have a cat that can be in two states. It can be grumpy or it can be happy. And um, we, we imagine that the system is homogeneous in time. It's stationary. So the conditional probabilities are not going to change. Um, and we can define the transition probability. So what's the probability that given that the cat was happy, it will go grumpy in the next state. Uh, so this will be uh, one arrow with one value. And the other thing would be what the probability that we, the cat will remain happy given that the cat was happy. And the same uh, starting from the grumpy cat, let's say, what's the probability that it's going to uh, remain in the grumpy state and what's the probability that from the grumpy state, it's going to move to the happy state. As I told you, we can model this using the uh, adjacency matrix. Um, and the, the past state, the present state, let's say, will uh, be written in the row and the next state will be defined in the column. So, here, the probability that from grumpy, the cat will remain in grumpy in the next state is 0, 0.9. From grumpy, it will go into happy, it's 0 0.1. The same thing here, from happy, it will go to grumpy, 0 0.7. And from happy, remain in happy, it's 0 0.3. Uh, so the main constraint here, obviously, to respect, to, to obey, let's say, the, the the basic uh, definition of a probability, uh, it's that the sum along rows will be equal to one. So when you are you have a, uh, your system in one state, uh, if you consider all the possible states from the current one, uh, it should remain in one. I mean, if you sum up all the probabilities. Uh, so that's it. So the rums, the so I'm sorry. So the, the sum in rows. Uh, is equal to one. And so here, okay, I had this little example, but we did it together. So what's the probability that uh, the, the, the real value, let's say, that the cat at time n plus one will be grumpy knowing that at time n it was happy. The probability is simply, um, simply this one. Okay, we are going to check that in the future state it's in grumpy, knowing that in the previous one it was happy, so it's 0 0.7 and so on. Okay, um, so maybe you can check this example after the lecture, and if you have questions, we can check this together. But um, so far, do you have any question? No? Okay, let me. Switch. So here you have the, the solutions, if you want to check this. Um, but we're going to switch to the next slide. So here, 
now that we have our matrix here, we can define a, a vector uh, Pn that defines the distribution at step n. So the, the, the state of the system, if you want, at step n. So for example, it has, the, the cat has at the beginning, so at, at step one, a probability of 0 0.5 to be in a grumpy state and 0 0.5 to be in a uh, happy state. So this is the distribution at uh, time one, for example. And we can define the state of the system at the at time n plus one simply by, by multiplying, uh, by applying the dot product, in fact, of the, um, the distribution at step n dot the transition matrix, and that's it. Um, so just to check this, you can write down um, the probability of uh, the little system here to be in another state. And for example, uh, what's the probability that the cat will be in at, at the next step in a happy stage? Uh, the probability is simply equal to the probability that at time n it was in a happy state and and from this happy state it remains in the happy state so we are going to check this cell in the matrix so the transition between happy and happy and the other possibility is that at time n the cat was grumpy so what's this probability you 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 get it from your vector p here and uh, since you want the probability uh, to have a cat in a happy state at the next uh, time, uh, you need to uh, tr do the transition between grumpy and happy. And it's this term, we are going to check this term here. Okay, you can do the same um, in order to compute the probability that the cat will be in a grumpy step at time n plus one. Euh, monsieur, j'ai juste une question au niveau de l'interprétation de la matrice. Mm -hmm. En fait, euh, quand on voit la matrice M, les indices en ligne, c'est l'état en N. C'est ça. Ah oui, du coup, par exemple, s'il est, est grumpy, il a 90% de chances de rester grumpy au pas suivant, c'est ça Exactement, exactement, ah, okay. c'est ça. ça. Okay. Donc, les lignes vont définir les états au temps actuel et les colonnes vont définir la transition vers le futur. Donc, si je, si je regarde ici, euh, ça veut dire que, sachant que le chat était grumpy, quelle est la probabilité qu'il transite vers l'état happy ben, C'est 0,1. Idem ici. Sachant que le chat était happy au temps actuel, quelle est la probabilité qu'il devienne grumpy au temps suivant C'est 0,7. Voilà. OK. OK. Merci. Is it clear for everyone? C'est clair pour tout le monde? Oui? OK. Donc, uh, so, just after this slide, so at slide 9, we have um, more properties regarding the Markov chains that we are going to see the next, uh, during the next lecture. So I'm going to skip all this part just for now, and we're going to study it um, during the next lecture. So we have different properties that we are going to check. Uh, and now we are going to see one uh, particular kind of Markov uh, chains, of Markov processes, which are called the Moran process. Okay. Um, so Let's, uh, let's describe directly this, this process. It's a process that can help you to model um, living systems, some kinds of living systems, okay? So um, it's like what it said here. Um, it's a simple stochastic process, Markov chain process that is used in biology. Uh, it helps you to model uh, finite populations. So. Let's imagine that you, you will have a population of capital N individuals um, that can mutate, that will reproduce, that will be selected and that, that will drift. And in this case, if you have this kind of, um, 
of operators, let's say, of modifications that can be applied to your system of any individuals. In this case, you can use the Moran process to model your system. So as I told you, you can model also a variety increasing effects like mutations. So if you have one population of one kind and you start mutating your population, you will get new variants that will appear. Um, so you have a variety increasing effect. Uh, you can also have, uh, or you can also model some variety reducing effects like drift or selection. Okay, so in this case, uh, in the case of selection, for example, you can assign a fitness to one kind of, of mutation or variant and it will have more probabilities to get reproduced. Um, so this can lead to a variety reducing effect because some variants or most of the variants could be um, poorly adapted, let's say, will have a, a very low fitness and can be, um, will vanish out, let's say, from the system. Uh, so the main characteristics of this kind of process is that you will have a constant population of size n, uh, so n individuals, and that's it. And you have um, in the basic um, in the basic description in the basic scenario only two populations. So uh, with a vector uh, with two values, a value of y that will describe the number of individuals in population one and n minus y for the number of individuals in the, in the second population, uh, you can describe your, your system entirely. So if you have only two variants, by having this y and knowing the number of individuals in your system, you can define uh, entirely your system. Uh, and how does this process works? Uh, at each iteration, one individual will reproduce at random with a given probability, and you will kill one individual at random also. Um, in this case, uh, in, in, the kind, in, the, in this kind of processes, the same individual can be chosen twice, once for reproduction and, one, and once for uh, death. Okay, so the, the individual that was chosen for reproduction can also be chosen uh, to be killed. Um, and at the end, at some point, you can reach a state where only one of the population exists. And in this case, you will say that uh, it's the end, the end of the game. Okay, so if one of these two uh, components of your vector is equal to capital N, uh, you will say that the game is over, okay? One of the two populations has uh, completely invaded the system and that's it. Now let's take a, a, a look at this, uh, this simple schema that represents the process. So you have a population here uh, let's imagine that you have eight, uh, eight individuals. So each ball here, here represents an individual. And you have i equal to three uh, black, uh, black balls, black individuals, let's say. Okay. Uh, and at some point, you are going to remove, to duplicate one. The first, you will going to duplicate one. Let's say randomly you take this one, you duplicate it, and you will take another one at random, maybe this one, and you will remove it. And you go to the next. And these, these two operations will define your next stage. Okay. Now your, your, um, your system has moved from the state 8, 3 to the state 8, 2. Because, uh, because now you have uh, lost one of these individuals, okay, one, one of these three individuals. Uh, the, the number of individuals in the, in the other population, in the white population, is simply n minus y, which is simply here six. Um, okay, 
So uh, you go like this, you can um, apply these two, two steps, duplication step and uh, killing step. And at the end, you will reach one, one population uh, which has only one kind of uh, individuals, one population, and uh, you will say that uh, the game is over. Now, if we represent this uh, little experiment using a Markov process, you can say you can you can uh, simply take this um, this Markov chain. And this Markov chain will uh, model your system, the system that was represented in the in the previous step. So, since we have two populations, but you only need to know the number of individuals belonging to one population to define entirely the system because the second population is simply capital N minus Y, Y giving the number of population of, of the individuals of the, the first population, you can simply model your system considering the number of individuals of the first population, Y, let's say, okay? Um, so our random variable is Y, the number of individuals of population of type one. And uh, what can happen? Uh, you can remain at a number of individuals equal to Y. So this can be modeled by the probability uh, to go from Y to Y. Uh, you can also go from I to I plus one. So it means that you have one more individual of uh, the population of type one. And you can also go from Y to the stage uh, I minus one. Uh, and the, the condition is that the sum of these three probabilities should be equal to one, okay? You cannot uh, go anywhere else uh, starting from I individuals. Uh, now, I have a question for you. Um, what do you need to apply or which kind of, um, of operations like duplication or removal should take place in order to remain at I individuals? Can you tell me this? What do you need to apply in terms of, uh, of operations to your system to remain at I individuals? Both. Exactly, both. So you need to remove uh, one individual of type one and you need to duplicate one individual of type one. Also. So this will compensate, the death will compensate the duplication and you will remain at I individuals. In this case, from uh, to switch uh, from I to I minus one, what do you need to do? Anyone? At time n, you had i individuals, and at the next step, you are going to have only i minus one individuals of type one. What do you need to do in order to uh, get i minus one individuals of type one? To remove one. Exactly, you, you will need to remove one individual of type one, and you should also prevent the uh, duplication to compensate this death. So you will going to duplicate one individual of the other population, not or, of the population of type one. And uh, the, last, uh, the last case, in order to move from I to I plus one individuals, what do you need to do? It's, it's exactly the, the opposite case uh, as before. So in this case, you need to take one individual of the population of type one to duplicate it, and you need to kill one individual of the other population. And in this case, you will get one extra individual uh, in your uh, population of type one. And that's the only things that you can do uh, in your system. So you can only go from I to I minus one, from I to I plus one, or remain in the state I. Um, you can compute the probability of fixation 
um, if you consider the probability of reaching a state n from a state i, okay, um, and to do so, um, you can simply uh, it, doing this. It's doing the, the opposite, uh, the opposite um, thinking. Okay, here you were uh, starting at the present and going to the future, and here um, what is written here. It's exactly the opposite. You are taking a look to the, at, the pre, at the current stage, and you want to see from where have you uh, have you arrived here. So the probability to get x i individuals at the current time, um, you will need to go from i to i uh, minus one. Um, at uh, stage i minus one, um, you will need to to do the transition from um, from i to i plus one uh, in the next stage, and here is the probability to remain in at state at the state i um, multiplied by uh, the probability that you were at um, state i in the current uh, generation, okay? Um, if if uh, the number of individuals as, at state i was going, it was equal to zero, the probability um, uh, to reach state n from uh, this state i will be zero. You will not be able just by duplicating and, and deleting, uh, you cannot um, colonize entirely your population. You cannot get any individuals from zero individuals. It's impossible. And if you were already equal to n, you already had n individuals, um, the probability to reach um, the state n to colonize entirely your population is simply equal to one you have already colonized all the population. And I will re-explain this. If um, i is in between 0 and n, so you have not colonized entirely your population, like in this case, or you have not vanished from the, from the, the, the experiment, so you are not in this case. If you are in between, the probability that at some point, starting from i individuals, you are going to reach the state n. You are going to colonize the entire the entire uh, system. Is simply the probability to go from i to i minus one, multiplied by the probability to um, to reach the state n, but from the state i minus one. So. Uh, but by bad luck, you are losing one individual. Okay, this is the probability. This is the transition, and here you are taking up to the probability that, okay, even if I have lost one individual, what's the probability to reach the state n? Here it's the same thing, but if you go to the state i plus one. So what happens if um, from the state i I move to the state i plus one, and I multiply this by the probability uh, to reach um, to reach the state n from the state i plus one, and here it's the same probability. So it's the probability uh, to go from i to i to remain in i, and the probability to reach the state n from the state i. So to reach the state n from the state i, you have three possibilities. One is if you lose one individual, this case, if you gain one individual, this case, and if you remain uh, at a constant number of individuals, and it's this last case. And evaluating these three possibilities, you can um, update or you can express the probability to reach the last state uh, from the state i, the fixation, let's say. That's, that's what we call the fixation. It's the probability to colonize the entire system. And um, 
to do this, you can um, you can solve this little system, and at the end you will get this fixation probability. Um, so you can uh, really compute the probability that starting at at a state i. So if you have i individuals at some point, what's the probability to colonize the entire uh, population? And this is given that by this formula. Um, and um, uh, here you have one, one variable, lambda k here, that can be expressed um, by this uh, ratio. It's the ratio between the probability to go from k individuals to k minus one divided by the probability to go from k individuals to k plus one. Okay, so um, I will ask you to uh, try to prove this, um, this, uh, this uh, fixation uh, probability, uh, but we're going to do this later on. So for the moment, just trust me, there is this, um, this formula that will tell you the probability that starting at with I individuals where you're going to colonize the entire system, it's given by this analytically, okay? Um, you will be able to do the proof uh, in groups uh, just uh, after. Um, but before this, I will switch to uh, the next cases because uh, since this, this video will be uh, given to, to other students, it's better to switch this part of, uh, of working. We're going to do it later, uh, but I, I'm going to switch to the other uh, uh, to the other lecture parts. Okay, so we have the proof here. I'm going to switch very quickly. Uh, okay, so the previous um, model was um, was not taking into account. Uh, any kind of selection or uh, drift. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, there was no selection. There was only a random drift, giving that um, our individuals were going to die or being replaced randomly. Okay, so um, in this case, in the case of the neutral drift, if we imagine that the probabilities of uh, being duplicated or being uh, killed were not uh, depending on a given uh, a fitness or anything, we are in the case of the neutral drift. Uh, in this case, in the case of the neutral drift, uh, we can write down the probabilities as follow. So the probability to go from state i to i minus one, so to lose one individual, is simply equal to i times n minus i divided by n square. And uh, I think you're able to tell me why do we have this probability. So the, I, I, um, once again, the neutral drift case is the one that I have presented you, okay? Uh, you take one individual and random and you kill it. So the fitness is not taken into account to choose the individual. And the same for the reproduction. You are going to take one individual at random and you are going to duplicate it. It, it will going to reproduce just by random chance. In this case, you have a random drift scenario. And given this, uh, this scenario, can anyone uh, can someone tell me why do we have this, this kind of probability? So I have presented you the first one, but it's the same one for the, for the second one. So the probability to go from i to i plus one is simply i times n minus i divided by n square. And the, the probability to remain at stage i is simply one minus uh, the two other probabilities. Can anyone tell me uh, why do we have these uh, formulas here?
energia let's make this question simpler then um, to go from i individuals to i minus one what do we need to do can you tell me this again i asked you i asked you this question a couple of minutes ago uh, can you tell me what do we need to do we need to remove one yes we need to remove one individual of type one uh, you will choose one individual of this kind uh, randomly you will remove one individual randomly what's the probability that you will take one individual of type one to remove it given that you have i individuals you are going to pick one randomly what's the i on n i divided by n exactly so let me write this down so it's exactly this the probability to select one individual to be killed is i divided by n okay and uh, before killing the individuals you were uh, reproducing individuals and in this case uh, which type of individuals do you do you need to reproduce in order to lose one of these individuals of type one are you going to make one individual of type one reproduce or another of type two if you want to lose one individual of type one what happens if uh, you have two possibilities what happens if given that you have killed one individual of type one you also reproduce one individual of type one how many individuals of type type one do you have at the end and the same yes so uh, in this case you need to reproduce one individual of the other type what's the probability to take one individual out of the other type It's n minus i uh, divided by n. n minus i divided by n. Very good. Exactly. And if you do the product between these two terms, you get this one. Okay? That's why you get this term here. It's exactly the same for this term. To do this, you need to remove one individual of the other population. Uh, duplicate this you need to kill uh, no sorry to duplicate one individual from your population from population of type one so this is given by i divided by n times you need to kill one individual of the other population which is given by the probability n minus i divided by n and this is giving you this and let it here and this is given by this and this one is trivial it's simply one uh, you you have only these three possibilities so the, the remaining probability is simply the difference between one and the sum of the two previous uh, previous values okay um, so if you remember this gamma term here is simply the ratio between the probability to go from k to k minus one divided by k goes to k plus one here if you take a look uh, this this ratio will be equal to one because you are dividing this by this uh, these two terms are exactly the same so if you do the ratio you will get a one is that clear so now that we have these probabilities now that we have this gamma we can um, compute the probability of fixation of one population given a random drift uh, scenario okay uh, now let's go to a, a slightly more uh, difficult case in this case um, so in the previous one you were picking one individual to kill it or to duplicate it 
by random, just purely random chains. And now for the selection case, we are going to add a little parameter, extra parameter called the fitness. So we have fi that defines the fitness for the individuals of type one and gi, let's say, for the fitness of the individuals of type two. Um, so that's the fitness. And um, so let's imagine that again, the state i will define the number of individuals of type one. In this case, the uh, probabilities, the transition probabilities are slightly different. And I would like to take, I would like you to take a look at these uh, formulas and uh, maybe you can uh, compare these formulas to the previous one. And I would like you to tell me um, which, uh, to, to explain me a little bit this, uh, this, these formulas, okay? So I will let you just 30 seconds, I say, just to take a look at these formulas and you're going to, um, to tell me uh, what are these formulas telling you. Okay, so maybe I can start with the last one, the easy one, because I'm lazy. Uh, the, the, the last one is simply uh, a probability to remain at, at step i, and it's the same as in the previous case. So the system can, from a state i, can it can go it can go only to uh, three uh, other next states. The first one is to remain at a state i. The other one is to go to state i minus one, and the other one is to go to i plus one. So if I have defined these two previous um, probabilities, the remaining one is simply one minus the sum of the two. Okay, so now can uh, someone tell me, can explain me the first formula, please? What do we need to do? Let me help you to go from i to i minus one. We, we already said that we need to uh, we need to uh, take one individual of type of type two and duplicate it and we need to kill one individual of type uh, one so can someone please explain me uh, this formula i can try yes please go ahead um so if we need to um, to kill an individual of type one mm -hmm. uh, and there is a i individual of type one so um so that's the part uh, the second part yes of uh, the probability i divided by n very good and very good. It, yes And the, the first part is just, um, so we have to select uh, um, an individual of type two and to duplicate it. And so to select it, we, we make a multiplication, a product, mm -hmm. a GI, because it's, it's uh, the fitness of the type two, multiplied mm -hmm. by, um, n minus i, and that's divided by the, the entire proportion. Uh, so the fitness of type one uh, multiplied by um, the, the proportion of type one in the whole population, so i, and that's the same for the type two. Exactly, very good. So it's exactly the same as in the previous case, as in this case, but now the only difference is that we need to weight the number of individuals of each population by their fitness. So the highest the fitness, the highest the weight that will be next to the number of individuals and 
uh, then the k is the probability that this will happen. Okay. Uh, so very good. The only difference uh, between these two cases is that the fitnesses here, um, we are considering a fitness proportional scenario. They are uh, just working as weights that are going to, um, to modify a little bit the behavior of only the number of individuals. And here we have the same, exactly the same scenario. So this part corresponds to the probability to select, to choose, not to select, to choose one individual of type two to kill him, this individual. And this part is only the probability to select an individual of type one to duplicate. And um, here again, you can see that the fitnesses are being applied as weights in order to modify the previous equation. Uh, once again, we can see that absorb. We have, I have not, I have not defined uh, what abs absorbing states are. We are going to see this later on. But absorbing states, you can imagine what what these kind of states are by the name, by their names. Uh, these absorbing states are states from which you cannot escape. Uh, you cannot escape from uh, i equal to zero. You cannot produce individuals from nowhere. So if you, at some point, you get zero individuals of one kind, you will remain in this state. In this, in this state. And the other absorbing state that is complementary to the first one is that if you get n individuals, it means that there is no individual from the other population, and then you are not going to be able to escape from this state. So you have uh, you have uh, run into an absorbing state. You are going to, to remain there forever. Uh, so now regarding for this fixation probability, uh, you know again that it depends on this gamma that is the, the, the ratio between the probability to go from k to k minus one divided by the probability to go from k to k plus one so the probability to lose one individual divided by the probability to win one individual. And in this case, you can also compute the gamma giving these two, um, two equations here. And at the end, uh, you can see that gamma i is simply uh, a, a function of the two fitnesses. Uh, so it's simply the fitness of the second population divided by the fitness of the first one. And this is simply equal to one divided by R. Um, if you define R uh, to be just the ratio between the fitness of the population one divided by the fitness of population two. Okay, you define this, uh, this variable R that is simply the ratio between the two. And at the end, you get the um, fixation probability. So the probability that if you start uh, with I individuals of population one, you are going to colonize the entire population. And this is simply a function of R, of the ratio between these uh, two populations. And obviously, you will also have N and I uh, as parameters of, uh, of this um, a probability of fixation. So can someone explain me a little bit this, um, this equation? What does it mean? If you take a look to this, uh, what can you tell me about this? What happens, for example, if the ratio is very, very, very high, for example? Let's, let's uh, start with something simple. Let's imagine that R has some value, let's say, and um, that you start with very few individuals. What is going to happen? So I is, is, is equal to one, for example, it's very close to, to zero. Okay. 
or even what happens if i is equal to zero Euh... <coughs> ouais, du coup, 1 sur R, c'est la. Si vous demandez si le ratio était proche de. Si R était égal à 0, c'est bien ça mmh, Non, là, c'est si I est égal à 0. Que se passe si I est égal à 0 R, ça vaut quelque chose et I est égal à 0. Euh, ben, ça va faire que le ratio va être. Euh... Ouais, attendez, excusez-moi, je vois pas. Euh, ah oui, du coup, ça va. Euh, le xi va être supérieur à 1. Ça, c'est. Euh... Ah non, non, pardon, pardon. Il va être égal à... Xi va être égal à 0. Égal à 0. So, donc, si jamais je commence avec 0 individu de type 1, j'ai aucune chance de coloniser toute la population. Ça, c'est déjà bien. C'est logique. Oui. Euh, Qu'est-ce qui se passe What happens if euh, i is equal to n So I start with capital N individuals of type 1. What, what will happen with Xi? Ça, c'est le cas extrême mm -hmm. où euh, toute la carte a déjà été. où, où tout l'individu, où les individus ont déjà tout colonisé. Du coup, euh, la probabilité est déjà égale à 1. Exactement. C'est déjà égal à 1. So the probability Xi, if. I is equal to n, it's already equal to 1. So this, this also works. Uh, okay, now what happens if, uh, if R is going to increase or decrease? Can anyone tell me this? I ne peut pas être inférieur à 1. Non, non. I, I, forcément... I ouais. sera toujours entre 1 et N. Que ouais. se passe si R, par contre, si R est très, très grand, par exemple euh... Je sais pas. You can take, uh, if you want, you can open your uh, uh, Python, uh, Python shell and try to compute this. What happens if you take an R that is very high? Uh, and what happens if you take R very low? I will leave you a couple of minutes to do it. To do it. And you take, for example, with i equal to 5 and n equal to 20, for example. You can take some, uh, some numerical values, but you should be able to get an intuition of this kind of... Uh, if, you, if someone tells you what's uh, going to happen with a system that is governed by this kind of formula, you should be able to, to take and uh, just uh, take a look like very very quickly to some uh, extreme cases and uh, tell, okay, this is going to happen. So you can take, for example, R equal to 10 in one case and R equal to 0 0.1 in the other case. Does anyone has a solution? Or I can show you my. Si quelqu'un fait le calcul. Si je vais vous mettre des résultats du coup pour le premier. For the first scenario, let's imagine that we first compute this. So one minus 10. So R is equal to 10 to the power of minus five, let's imagine that we start with five individuals and we, we divide by one minus 10, also the ratio is equal to 10, at the power of minus 20. Let's imagine that we have 20 individuals. 
And if you compute this, you are going to get something like this. So it means that if the ratio is very high, uh, you have a lot of chances to colonize the entire population. This makes sense because R is uh, the feature of population of type 1 divided by G, the population of type 2. If R is very high, it means that the fitness of the population of type 1 is very high with respect to the population of type 2. So if its fitness is very high, it has more chances to uh, colonize the entire population. And if you imagine the other scenario, let's imagine this case, you will get something like this. Uh, so if now the ratio is 0 0.1, so it means that the fitness of the population of type 1 is 10, 10 times lower than the other one, the probability that it will uh, uh, conquest all the population is very, very low. OK? Is it OK for the intuition? So it's something that you should try to do when you get some one formula, try to take it and explore the extreme values to get an idea of what is going to happen and if it makes sense or not. So it, at some point you need to derive some formulas. You just stop and you just try to see if it makes sense or not. So you explore the, the, the extreme values, the extreme cases, and you will see if it makes sense or not. Um, okay. Um, let me take a look at this. Um, so from this formula, from the population to take over the entire population, there is a special case um, when we are going to consider that population one correspond to mutants, for example, for new variants, let's say, new mutants. And we imagine that we start with a single mutant, so i equal to 1. And we compute the fixation uh, probability, and this is called the evolution rate. Okay, This is a special case that could be interesting in some cases. So in this case, we take uh, simply the, 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 the previous formula here, and we compute it with i equal to 1 to see the probability that if one mutation appears, uh, is this mutation, is this, this mutant will be able to uh, conquest the entire population or not. This is something interesting if we imagine this kind of mutation processes. One individual appears, it's only one individual against all the, the, the population, and what will be the probability to uh, conquest the entire population. Do you have questions? Do you have any question regarding this? No questions? So uh, the next time we are going to um, check more properties of the Markov chains. And then we are going to see another kind of Markov chain that is called the branching process. Uh, that has also some uh, biological uh, implications and biological use. Okay, so I will end up the video here.